Timbre, tone quality. What are we dealing with? Well, when I play a low C in a piano, why is it that this sounds like a piano to me and not like a bass trumpet or a trombone or a bassoon or some other instrument? Well, the reason is that that if I take the integer multiple of the frequency for that low C, that each integer multiple, which is this, and so on, those multiples of those frequencies are present in that note. How loud those overtones, as they are called, or harmonics, as they're called, how loud those harmonics are relative to the fundamental, which is the primary note, determines the quality of sound. I'm going to hold the damper down in the middle C and play the low C very loudly with a sharp attack and, and then take my finger off and let the damper stop that note. You should hear the C an octave above it ringing. Listen carefully. There it is. I can do it with the G above that. I can do it with the C above that. I can do it with the E above that. You can just barely hear the G above that. Whenever you hear any musical instrument playing any note, the harmonics are always present. Let's look at that with the trumpet. I'm asserting that when I play a low, this note on the trumpet, low C, this is C trumpet, that this note is also there. First, let me prove that uh, that first note will ring this note in the piano. I'll hold the damper down in the middle C, and I'll play it loudly in the trumpet. You can hear it ring. There it is. Now I'll play the C an octave. I'll hold the damper down to C an octave above it. Get the G above that. There it is. C above that might be a little hard to hear. And so on. But clearly those overtones are in here. Now how loud the overtones are generated in here compared to the fundamental note is what makes this sound like a trumpet instead of a piano or a flute or some other instrument playing the same note. All right, we're at my computer right now, and what I'm going to do is use a website dealing with Fourier synthesis. Fourier synthesis is a mathematical way of discussing timbre or tone quality. All right, what this site does, it will allow me to play a fundamental tone and then add the overtones to it. And by overtones, I mean integer multiples of the fundamental frequency. One, uh, so if it's an A440, the first overtone would be 880 and so on. So we'll play the fundamental, and then I'll play the first overtone at half the volume, and I'll prove to you it's there by shutting off the fundamental, and then I'm going to add each overtone sequentially at uh, reducing the volume by the same fraction. In other words, the, uh, third, the uh, second harmonic, half the volume, third harmonic, third the volume, fourth harmonic, one-fourth the volume, fifth harmonic, one-fifth the volume, and so on and so forth. Fundamental. First overtone and half the volume. I just took the fundamental out. You can hear it, the first overtone is there, which is the second harmonic. Let's put the fundamental back in. Let's add the third harmonic. Fourth harmonic. Fifth harmonic.
Okay, now the program's working somewhat strangely on my computer, but you, know, you can try this yourself. But the, the main thing I wanted you to hear is that as it settles in, we don't hear different notes, we just hear the tone quality changing. That's what timbre is all about. When I have overtones added on top of a fundamental, uh, if, if the overtones are not as loud as the fundamental, we don't hear chords, we hear a tone quality change. Now, how does that uh, affect us as trumpet players? Okay. Well, here's my B-flat trumpet. This is a New York Trumpet Company Stage 1, California, uh, light model with the braces out of here. Um, let's just play a little something just to get the sound in our head. Trumpet if you look at the, the video clip about how a trumpet works, you'll see how the overtones build on a trumpet. Uh, but I didn't talk a whole lot about the bottom part of it. Now the fundamental should be an octave under the lowest note. And it is, but we usually think of it as just a pedal C, but it's very much out of tune. we use conical tubing inserted into the cylindrical tubing to trick out the series that's normally only the odd multiples of the fundamental frequency to fill in the gaps to get evens as well. But it only tricks it. It, just, it only does it partly. Uh, and it's not perfectly done. And on a trumpet, the, the note that would come on up to fill in the gap where we would expect to find the fundamental is usually flat. So what about flugelhorn? How about if we, how about if we try this on a flugelhorn? Okay? My flugelhorn, I got this from through Felix Vaser as well. Um, and flugelhorn has a fairly you know, common quality sound that we are used to hearing. Let's play the same tune. Fairly mellow sound, not nearly as bright and harsh sounding as the trumpet was. Uh, and the reason is it has the same overtone series, but the higher overtones are not emphasized nearly as much. It's the lower overtones that get emphasized, and that produces a mellower sound. Now, let's talk about the series on flugelhorn compared to the trumpet down low, being replaced with conical tubing. It doesn't completely correct that low fundamental into place, so it's very flat on a regular trumpet. What about on flugelhorn? Best explanation I ever had, and I actually got this through a discussion on Trumpet Players International Network, and it, to me it makes a lot of sense. Um, if you look at the overtone series for a cone, a perfect cone that's closed at one end, it does produce an all integer series, just like strings fixed at both ends, or a pipe that's open at both ends, like a flute or penny whistle. So a cone does produce the series. Well, a flugelhorn is considerably more conical than a trumpet. So it stands to reason that since it has much more conical tubing, that the correction to bring the, um, the bottom note up to fill in a gap where we would expect to find uh, a pedal C perfectly in tune, the correction is much better than it is for a trumpet because the tubing is much more conical. I think the final remark that I'll leave with you here at this point is this. What determines the timbre or tone quality of musical instruments ostensibly is their shape, the shape of the instrument, the part that's producing the sound uh, that we hear. Uh, strings by themselves don't produce much sound, so they have things like sound boards in the back of violins and guitars. That's the subject of another video clip. With uh, wind columns, it's the shape of the wind column. Flute is a cylinder. Um, a clarinet is largely cylindrical. But saxophones, bassoons, are all conical. They are long extruded cones. And trumpets, and flugelhorns, trombones, French horns are all conical. What determines the difference in the sound is how much more or less conical the instrument is compared to the other ones. And there you have it. A little bit of physics, a little bit of acoustics, a little bit of brass wind uh, theory. Hopefully this gives you a little better idea about how your instrument works, and maybe that's something that you can use sometime just to try to understand a little more about what you're doing as a trumpet player.